OK, well, how'd you make out? Well, what I would do is I would try to factor this. It's a trinomial. So I'm going to try to factor it into two pieces. I'll put a 2x here and an x here in the hopes that this is going to factor somehow nicely. This negative sign tells me that, in fact, the signs here are going to be opposite. But I just can't plunk down plus or minus anywhere because these things are different. There's a 2 here, not a 2 here. So I've got to be really careful with how I place those down. But I want the product to actually be 3, and I want to combine them so, in fact, I get a 5 somehow. So 3 and a 1 might be a good idea. If I put the 3 here, that would produce a 6. And then a 1 here actually might be pretty good, because then I could subtract off the 1 to get the 5. So let me try this. I'm going to put the 3 here and a 1 here. Now, how should I put down those signs now? This is a 6. This is going to produce a 1. I'm going to want the, the thing to be negative, so I'm going to want that big quantity to be negative. So let me put a negative sign here and a positive sign here. Let's check and make sure that I'm really OK. 2x times x is 2x squared. Great. The inside term is an x. The outside term is a minus 6x. Minus 6x plus x is minus 5x. So that checks, and the last times the last gives me a minus 3. I'm OK. So I've just factored that thing. And so now I have two things that multiply to give 0. So either this thing, 2x plus 1, equals 0, or the other possibility is that x minus 3 equals 0. And I have to solve each of these individually. And I'm going to see my two solutions forming here. If I bring this over to the other side, I'd see a minus 1 on the right. So I'd see a 2x equals minus 1. If I divide both sides now by 2, I see that x would have to be minus 1 half. So that's one solution. And what's the other solution? I come back here and solve this and see x has to equal 3. So this quadratic actually has two solutions. We found it by factoring. One is minus 1 half, and the other one is 3. If you want, you can check, plug them both back in, and see what you get. OK. Let's try one quick last one here. I'll do this one for you, because that last one might have knocked you out. Knocked me out, by the way. I'm sort of exhausted. All right, here we go. x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Again, since everything is already over, I can just try to factor. Let's see what happens now. I put an x and an x. I see that I'm going to have the same sign, and that same sign is negative. So I'm going to have a negative negative. I need something that actually multiplies to give 4 and combines to give 4, and 2 and 2 work great. Check. x squared minus 2x, and minus 2x is minus 4x, and minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. We're great. Well, look, it turns out this was actually a perfect square. So I have two solutions, either x minus 2 equals 0, or the same thing, x minus 2 equals 0. So in either case, what I see is x equals 2. Aha, uh -huh, that's sort of fun. It turns out this is a quadratic equation that has only one solution. Something wrong? Absolutely not. Quadratic equations may have no solutions. They may have one solution, or they may have two solutions. They'll never have more than two, though. And here's an example where this has exactly one solution. Even though you might have heard on the streets, oh, if it's quadratic, it has to have two. That's just street talk. I'm telling you straight talk. When you have a quadratic equation, there might be no solutions. There may be one solution, or there may be two. OK, that's it for quadratics.